Hey everyone, it's Susan Jones. Welcome back to Susan's Sunday Spotlight. This week I have a fun game for you and it's a math game and it's called Fraction Wars. Around this time of year I was usually teaching my students simple fractions like one half or one quarter and we were doing it using simple shapes like circles, squares, rectangles, etc. So this game is a perfect way for students to not only identify and practice reviewing 2D shapes but also breaking those shapes into different fractions and comparing which fractions are bigger and smaller. So let's see how to play. need for this game are some simple dice. So these ones right here, these are just like dry erase um, dice that I made because I only want the numbers to go one through four. If you teach an older grade or if you have some students that are ready to start dividing things into equal parts of six, you could use regular dice. The five I find to be a little tricky. So really a dry erase cube or some dice that you make your own that only have the numbers one through four are really perfect for this game. So you want your dice and then you want a whiteboard where they can go ahead and draw the shapes that they make and the fractions that they make. Lastly, I have this little recording sheet that I like to use. Um, it's a greater than, less than sheet, and basically all it is is 10 blank blocks. One says player one, one says player two, and there's a grid with 10 different places to write it in. Because what students are going to do is they're going to roll a fraction, and they're going to figure out which fraction is bigger, which is smaller, or if they are the same. And just a small hint, I usually use a sheet like this one, uh, since it doesn't say anything about fractions on it. I use this sheet for addition, subtraction, anything like that. So you could go ahead and really just have students roll two dice, find the sum, write it in, and see which one's bigger as well. But for this one, we're going to play with fractions. So, all students need to do is they'll take turns. So student number one, player one, that'll be me. I will roll my dice. I rolled a one and a two. So students are going to always take their larger number on the bottom, and they're going to put their smaller number on top to make their fraction. Now we would have already gone over this by now that, you know, the bottom number is the whole and the top number is the part. So this fraction we're showing is one half. And player one will go ahead and write that in their first square. Player two will roll the dice. I don't know why I pretend to really roll the dice. One third. So player two will write that there. What students will then have to do is decide which is bigger. Is one half bigger or one third bigger? And there's a couple ways I do that. So now they need to go ahead and find out which one is bigger. And to do that on their little whiteboard, I would have them both create the same shape. In first grade, I found it a lot easier to make sure they did the same shape instead of different shapes and different sizes kind of taking away from what they're actually learning about the fraction. So we have to remember that they're starting with the same size thing. So on their whiteboard, they would both choose a shape, let's say a circle. They would draw two similar sized circles. And then they would go ahead and show their fraction. So one student had one half. The other student had one third. I'll try to break that into three equal pieces. It's hard to do. Um, and then they'll go ahead and shade it in. So we have one half shaded in and one third shaded in. Then they'll go ahead and look and see which one is bigger. The student who had one half, theirs is bigger. So then down here where they had their fractions, one half and one third, they would go ahead and draw a greater than sign facing the one half. Whoever was the winner of that war, aka whoever's number was larger, I have them do one of two things. I will either have them circle this number, like so, or I will have them just shade in their winning side. That way after we've done 10 rounds of this game of comparing fractions, we will see which player won the most. If they have a tie and they both end up rolling the same fraction, they make sure that they put an equal sign here and then you don't need to color in either or you could color in both, I guess it'd be up to you, because it counts equally towards each other's points. Another thing I like to do in my first grade classroom when we were teaching about fractions was I would always have a bunch of laminated shapes already split into pieces. Now some of the teacher supply stores probably already have some really good shapes with the shapes that can fit on top of them so they can visually see it, but a lot of times I would just go ahead and cut circles and make, uh, I would do all the normal first grade fractions. So I'd have one cut in half, I would have one cut into thirds, one cut into fourths, and I would just laminate them. That way when this exact problem came up, students could also just use these laminated circles which would already be divided into the shapes that they needed, and they would go ahead with the lamination and use a dry erase marker to shade in half versus a third, and then they could compare them this way too. Then when they're playing again, they can just go ahead and erase it and start over. I do the same thing with rectangles and squares, so students have a bunch of different options to try when they're playing. 
Now, of course, during this game, you're going to get students who might roll the same number and they'll get two over two or three over three. That is great practice for them realizing that when they have the same number as the numerator and the denominator, that it is a whole, it's one big piece. And you could still have them go ahead and show that fraction by shading in all the pieces if you think they needed the help. And if not, they just know that that's a whole and that's fine. So that's how you play Fraction Wars. It's a pretty simple game that you can play in your classroom. All you really need are two pairs of dice with the, only the numbers one through four, and then just a whiteboard for them to show their fractions. You, of course, don't need this little sheet here. You could just draw 10 boxes up at the top and check off every time someone wins it. But I do have this for free in the description link below. It's just one page. You can download it there. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked this game, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I know you liked it. And be sure to click the subscribe button below and hit the bell. That way you're notified every week of my new videos. Thanks for watching. Bye. That is how you play fraction.